Hey howdy guys, Connor McCaskill here and I am a huge fan of Fujifilm cameras. If you have ever used a Fujifilm camera or own a Fujifilm camera, you know what I'm talking about. There's something about these cameras that just kind of speak to me. They're super fun to use. I've had the Fujifilm X-T3 and I'm currently shooting on the Fujifilm X-T4, which I love this camera. But from time to time through friends, I've gotten a hold of some higher end Fujifilm cameras, which is really cool. I use the GFX-1 100 with Cameron Mackey. If you want to see that video, it was a great video. Definitely go check it out above. I compare it to the Fujifilm X-T3. And in this case, I've actually gotten my hands on the new version of the GFX 100, the GFX 100S, which I thought, okay, well, I've compared the other one to the X-T3. Why not compare the S to the Fujifilm X-T4? Thanks to Zach Mayfield for letting me borrow the GFX 100S for the day and allowing me to compare it to my Fujifilm X-T4. I took both the GFX GFX 100S and my X-T4 through downtown Nashville with a good buddy of mine, Malachi Salee, who also has a YouTube channel, Vlog City. If you're into motorcycle vlogs, definitely go check him out. He's recently rebooted the channel. And we went ahead and took the exact same shots both on my X-T4 and the GFX 100S. Now I know you're probably thinking, well, how is that possible? X-T4 is a crop sensored APS-C camera and the GFX 100S is a medium format beast. Um, well it's not gonna be a one-to-one -one comparison, unfortunately, but what I did is I threw a 50 millimeter F1.2 lens on my Fujifilm X-T4, which equates to roughly a 75 millimeter lens or so once you convert it to full frame. And then on the GFX 100S, I was using the 110 millimeter F2 lens, which equates to roughly and 85 millimeter to full frame. Don't quote me on these, I'm, I'm sure I'm off, but they're semi comparable lenses. So I tried to adjust the frame accordingly. Let's go ahead and kick this off with a photo comparison. Now the Fujifilm X-T4 is sporting a 26.1 megapixel 6K sensor. I mean, this thing is actually a great sensor and I love shooting photos on this camera. And as you can see from these photos, which were all shot in raw, by the way, they do look quite nice. There is something about Fujifilm where the photos just look particularly interesting and have a little more character than say like shooting on a Sony camera. Now that being said, the GFX 100S is sporting a 102 megapixel 12K sensor. And you can definitely see the difference between the X-T4 on the left and the GFX 100S photos on the right. There's something almost creamy, dreamy about the GFX 100S photos compared to the X-T4. In fact, if I look at GFX photos and then the X-T4 photos, I'm like, ooh, these <laughs> look good. Uh, and they do. So uh, there's definitely some magic, some mojo happening on this medium format camera. Now, of course, a lot of that creaminess is gonna be due to the additional bokeh that you are getting on that medium format sensor at F2 or whatever aperture I shot these photos on compared to F2 on the X-T4. I do understand that, but again, I really wanted to show the difference between the crop sensor and the medium format sensor when it comes to getting additional bokeh, additional bang for buck, you could kind of say, although the GFX 100S is a lot more expensive, but I will talk about some of those differences a bit later. Now with these 102 megapixel sensor photos, obviously it's gonna take up a lot more file storage. In fact, the JPEGs were roughly 40 megapixels when I exported them out of Lightroom. And when I dumped them into Premiere Pro, a little bit meta, we're in the editor now, how are we doing? Uh, it tended to kind of just immediately slow down my computer. There's something crazy about these files that is just shredding my M1 MacBook Pro. I don't know what it is. Obviously the files are big, but I just, I don't know why it would slow down my computer so much. And that is just the JPEGs, by the way. So pretty crazy. But with all that extra information and with all that extra resolution, we are able to get significantly more punch in quality on these photos. So potentially you could do some pretty interesting reframing if you are shooting photography on the GFX 100S. Whereas on the X-T4, I really wouldn't recommend reframing the photos all that much. Slight cropping, slight adjusting for the horizon, but that's about it. So when it comes to photography, of course the GFX 100S just slays the X-T4. 
Okay, now let's go ahead and jump over to video. Now video is interesting when it comes to the GFX 100S because I'm just gonna say it, it looks really good. I shot 24 frames per second, 30 frames per second, and 60 frames per second on the GFX 100S. And of course I did the same on the Fujifilm X-T4. However, at 60 frames per second, I could only record up to 2K on the GFX 100 compared to 4K on the X-T4. But aside from that, all of the settings were the same. Again, the X-T4 footage does look good. I've always been a big fan of the Fujifilm color science. It looks great. There's really nothing to complain about when it comes to the image of the X-T4. That being said, when we pop on over to the GFX 100S, that same thing that was happening with the photos is transferred over to the video. It has that rich, creamy, dreamy, larger than life, as my friend Zach Mayfield put it, character to the image, to the footage, and it looks really, really good. So yes, the footage coming out of the GFX 100S is also better. So does that mean because for photos and video, it is superior, that it's just a better camera than the Fujifilm X-T4? I should just sell it, sell everything, save up my money, sell my car, and buy the GFX 100S. Well, no, uh, definitely, definitely not. As much as I would love to own the GFX 100S, which I was borrowing again from Zach Mayfield, uh, I don't think that it is a very practical camera. There are definitely glaring issues with this camera compared to the X-T4. First off, let's just go over body ergonomics and functionality. With the X-T4, you have the back joystick as well as the D-pad, so you're able to control things on the screen like your focus point as well as navigate the menus using the d-pad and or the joystick on the back which all works great i have no complaints additionally you have the flip screen which is great we'll just talk about that real quick flip screen xt4 versus the weird tri-fold gfx screen not a fan of that definitely prefer the flip out screen but anyways on the gfx 100s unfortunately all you have is that joystick and honestly i don't like the joystick on the gfx 100s as much as i like the joystick on the xt4 um it is there's something about it it's kind of mushy i would put it and when i press down for instance to navigate through the menus i feel like half the time it doesn't work which is really frustrating and because that's the only way to navigate through the camera it's definitely a pain and more frustrating than maybe you would think it would be. So that's definitely one issue with the GFX. Additionally, another issue is autofocus. Now, Fujifilm isn't necessarily known for great autofocus, but on the X-T4, I'm, I'm using it right now. Hopefully it's working okay. It works decent on the X-T4. I would say it's acceptable on the X-T4. It's not amazing. It's not Sony. It's not Canon. I wish it was, but it ain't but the GFX 100S is a different story. Using the zoom lens, which I can't remember what the zoom range was, so I'll just put it right here. Um, but that lens, uh, it was practically unusable. I would just completely turn it off. I had to go to manual focus. It would put a box around the face, but it would almost never focus to it. I definitely don't like that lens. Now the lens that I was using in downtown Nashville because I knew it worked semi well was the 110 lens and it works okay it seemed like when i had malachi walk towards the camera it actually tracked fairly well but when i had him dip out of frame and then back in it just refused to find him even though the focus box was put on him and i was pressing the af button to focus it refused and waiting for it to get focus on you it won't someone's mowing over there Fantastic. Now, unfortunately, the bad autofocus carries over from video to photos even, so continuous autofocus with eye tracking I found to be pretty unusable for the most part on the GFX 100S, so I did switch it over to single point and pressing the AF button on the back. That worked pretty well. i say that was acceptable. It still wasn't amazing, but it worked for what I needed it to do. 
Now we do need to consider that this is a medium format camera and we are dealing with very, very large pieces of glass. So it does make sense that the autofocus would be slower on the GFX 100. Uh, especially when you compare it to other medium format cameras like the Hasselblad X1D, which I have used in the past working with Kinetica, which was a fantastic camera, but the same kind of story. Autofocus was pretty bad. And the last bit of footage that I got was a quick rolling shutter test. And honestly, it was somewhat comparable between the X-T4 and the GFX 100, which I wasn't expecting, although I would say it's probably a little bit worse on the GFX, but rolling shutter on both cameras was kind of yeah, of course, considering the lenses that I was using, which was a 50 millimeter on the X-T4 and a 110 millimeter on the GFX 100S. Now I just kind of want to chat about other differences between these two cameras, because although they actually are semi comparable, they are, it got way dark. They are also very different. Let's talk about price of these two cameras. The Fujifilm X-T4 is $1,700 brand new body only and lenses vary in price point anywhere from a hundred bucks like the TT Artisan lens I was using and maybe even a little cheaper all the way up to roughly $2,000 or so. So wide range of lenses, there's a lot of flexibility when it comes to glass on the X-T4. Now carry on over to the GFX 100S. Its body is $6,000 starting and the lenses for the Fujifilm lenses start at $2,000 and they carry up from there. Now, I did see on b and Photo that there were a couple cheaper options. I saw lenses as cheap as $600, I believe. Maybe they go a little cheaper than that, but honestly, getting cheap glass on the GFX 100S just doesn't make sense to me. I think if you're bothering to use the medium format camera, you're gonna wanna put really nice glass on your camera. Additionally, glass kind of makes your footage look how it looks. Right now I'm using, unfortunately, the kit lens on the X-T4. Now I do think it's probably the best kit lens you can get out there, but it's still a kit lens. So if I were to slap a really nice prime, this would look a whole lot better. So yes, price of the two cameras is drastically different. And of course the X-T4, if you're on any sort of budget, is gonna be a much more desirable option. Now, interestingly, the GFX 100S is capable of outputting 12-bit raw video through a micro HDMI port. I don't know why we're doing micro HDMI ports still to this day. Like the EOS R even has a micro HDMI port. I, it doesn't make sense. Can we just stop? I like what Sony did with their A7S Mark III. They have a full size. It just makes sense. Both cameras have five axis image stabilization, but honestly on both, for the most part, I don't recommend using it. I have never liked the image stabilization on sensor inside my X-T4. Uh, there's something janky about it. And honestly, on the GFX 100S, it's even worse, I would say. I'm always having to add post stabilization. The lens stabilization on the X-T4 with the OIS isn't bad. So a lot of times I'll use that, but I definitely am not a fan of stabilization on either of these cameras. Now, Malachi actually asked for me to give out this spec for you guys, so hopefully you find it useful, but the maximum shutter speed on the GFX 100S is 4,000 shutter, 1 4,000th of a second, whereas on the X-T4, you are able to get all the way up to 1 8,000th of a second. So if high shutter speed is very, very important to you and you are, for some reason, <laughs> Thinking about these two cameras, the X-T4 actually would be a better choice. Now, one thing that I was surprised about the GFX camera was the lack of premiumness, almost, I would say. It definitely felt like more of a work camera. Now, that's maybe not a bad thing. If you would prefer like a sleeker, more low profile camera, that's pretty cool. However, I do kind of like the premiumness of other cameras like with the Hasselblad X1D, there was like a premiumness to it that I liked. I also kind of like a cameras. Even the X-T4 kind of has this cool look to it that is very interesting. Uh, the GFX 100S does look good though. I don't dislike how it looks at all, but it did kind of lack a little bit of charms. Hopefully I wasn't too harsh on these cameras. I am a big fan of Fujifilm cameras, so I would like to see them get improvements in the future, and I hope you guys do as well. If you guys are also big fans of Fujifilm cameras, make sure to leave a like on this video, especially if you've watched all the way to this point. I would really appreciate a like and maybe consider subscribing. I don't post that often, um, but when I do, 
maybe you'll get a notification and maybe you'll see it. I really would appreciate a subscription. Come hang out, you know, we're just having fun. We're just talking about cameras. Leave a comment down below on maybe what kind of content you would like to see next. I don't have my hands on the GFX 100S anymore. That was a rented borrowed camera, but I do have my Fujifilm X-T4 and occasionally I can get my hands on other cameras. So let me know if there's anything in particular you guys would like to see from this channel. Once again, guys, I am Connor McCaskill. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you all have a fantastic day and I'll see you whenever I post another video. Take it easy, guys.